Today I'm going to change the antifreeze on my 2014 Honda Shadow Arrow. My bike came with Honda's green Type 2 coolant in it. I started using this in 1999. The coolant that Honda sells now is blue. It's the same stuff. For some reason, they changed the color. They are compatible, but if you mix the blue with the green, it can give you a sort of brown color, and I don't want that. Now I am going to flush it with Honda coolant and the reason for that is I don't want to add any water because it comes as a 50-50 mix. The day before I did this job, I ran my bike in one place and made sure that this fan came on. And if you look closely in there, there's a fan blade and you want to see that spin. Now the reason I did this is because after I add fresh coolant, I'm gonna to wanna to run it until the fan starts to spin again, and then I know it's up to full operating temperature. It's a good idea to secure your bike in place and jack it up so you can get a drain pan underneath it to collect the coolant. Now this isn't totally necessary, but I'm gonna remove this cover because I wanna drain the overflow tank and there's a screw behind it. So there's one Allen key screw here, and back here there's a cotter pin that you have to pull out in order to uh, slide the cover towards you. So a grommet here and there's the washer between here and the pin. I need to get it at the radiator cap which which means I have to take the seat off. So there is one eight millimeter screw here, two, bol two bolts here at the back of the seat and a bolt here at the front and we should be able to slide the tank back. one each side here. Yours will be Allen key or Torx, but I changed mine to a Phillips head screw because I found the others a pain in the butt. I changed mine to these. Now I can remove the seat. Just an FYI, that's a Mustang seat, so it's an aftermarket seat, not the Honda seat. Next, I'm gonna remove this bolt, it's a 12 millimeter. I'm going to need to remove these two nuts and that will allow me to slide the speedometer forward. There's two rubber bushings under the tank. We just need to slide them back past that.
And here is our antifreeze cap. When you undo that, it releases the vapor lock and allows the coolant to come out. So here's that oil pump drain washer, just to clarify things, and it has a copper gasket on it. So when you're in there looking at your oil pump, look for that copper gasket. I'm going to remove this 10 millimeter bolt here in order to change the coolant in the reservoir. There's a vent tube over the top you can see right here. I believe I just rotate it down and it will tip out. Easy as that. Apparently this holds 0.4 of a liter. I'm now ready to put that water pump drain plug back in. Make sure you got the copper gasket on it. And I'll do that and be right back. Now I'm going to tip the reservoir back that it's fully drained and put the bolt back in. Okay, I'm gonna fill up the radiator. The manual says 1.58 liters. I've cleaned my funnel, I've rinsed it out. Now I've left the radiator cap off and you would be done here. You could start it and you could wait until the fan came on with the radiator cap off and then you'd know you had all the air out and you'd be done. But because I'm changing colors of coolant, I want to dump it one more time. So I'm just going to start it, make sure it's circulated through the engine and then I'm going to empty it again exactly as before. I'm going to leave it run for about two minutes. Now we have left the dash hooked up so we can tell if there's a heat warning or anything like that. I'll bring you back. Okay, I'm going to dump the fluid for the second time. I know it's not necessary. I just would rather make sure I have really clean blue coolant in the bike because when you mix together the two colors, it can turn brown. I know I could flush it with water, but I'm here in Canada and I don't want to have trouble with freezing over the winter when I store it. So for me, it's worth it. So here we go. I'm going to pull that drain plug out of the water pump a second time. And this is not necessary. This is just clean. too much time on my hands. Looks to be good. Looks like this is going to be a waste of time. Sheesh. Right into the frame. Something to know.
Well, from first glance, I would say you don't need to do this. I wouldn't do that so I'll put new coolant in again and I'll show you the reassembly here's a picture of the water pump and you can see I have the drain plug partially in I'm just tightening it up take a good look at it because that's the one that you drain from this one right here now don't forget to add coolant to your overflow manual says 0.4 of a liter There is a min and a max line on it. I'm going to put it in the middle. Perfect. Right above the pole. Perfect. Okay, now I'm going to refill the radiator for the last time. Going to fill the radiator for the second time just like before and I did get a big air pocket out of it last time I filled it. I have carefully rolled the bike outside. I'm leaving it run until the fan comes on. I have the radiator cap off so that I can watch the level and if it needs more I'll add. It did start to boil over on the radiator once it started to circulate so I put the rad cap back on. Now we're going to do reassembly. Remember the tank slides over these. There's one on each side and there's hooked steel fittings on the inside of the tank. So take your time and slide it on those. I'm lined up with the hole here. Either way, we're good, so let's get the bolt for that and put it on. This tab has a tang here. If you put it on top, your bolt won't be long enough. It goes through here like this. Now we haven't disconnected this, but what you need to know is this slot goes over top of this piece here and you have to keep the wire out of the way of the slot or you'll never line up the holes. Okay, it's down nice and tight. Pull up on it, see if it pulls out. I don't think so. Turn our key on, make sure we have all our lights. We're good. There's a tongue here that goes underneath there. And then this wedges into the back. A little tough to figure out. Now we're gonna put the bolts in the side of the seat. One on this side, one on the other side. That's good.
do the other side as well. Next, we have the eight millimeter bolt here at the back to put in with the tongue on the front of our seat in place. Like I said, mine's a little bit fussy because it's an aftermarket seat and I have saddlebags under the seat. So it requires a little more finesse. The last thing we have to do is to put this cover here. So in this hole goes this post. And as you can see, a washer goes on and then the cotter pin goes through this hole. Down here, we get a bolt. Okay, and the hole is straight down. So washer goes on, feel for the hole. There you go, no tools required. And we have this Allen key down here. Okay, I've changed the fluid. Um, I did it without removing the tank, which I think is important, and without removing the instru instrument cluster. Did I need to flush it? Probably not. Hope it helps somebody with their own bike. See you next time.